Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have got a simple project that I want to make. It's a piece, it's some shop tooling. Basically, I want to make some soft jaws, relatively soft jaws for my three and a half inch Wilton bullet vise. I've got some work coming up, some welding work where I would need to hold items relatively securely, but I don't want to scratch them as well. And I have been wanting to make a set of these forever. And I think now, because I need them, is a good time to do it. We'll be using the shaper, we'll be using the milling machine, maybe the drill press, not for sure, but you'll see. We're gonna be making them out of what I believe is some 954 silicon bronze. So, got heavily supervised today. Got Cora in the floor here doing what she does best, and that is keeping us safe. And then in the back of the shop, we've got another set of eyes on us, and that is Chloe uh, the Collie. And she's mostly in here because it's storming. So. Let me show you Chloe real quick. I've got some stuff also sent in by viewers that I want to share with you as well, and then we will get started. So thanks for watching. So here we got Chloe. She is, she's not a fan of storms. She's really not. She don't like that kind of stuff. So she comes back here beside the mill machine because it's safe back here and hides to avoid getting barked at by the sky. Ain't that right? She's a good girl. She's just not a fan of storms. So this is the little vise that is going to receive some new jaws. And this I use primarily on my welding table. And I've said this in the past once before, but this vise actually is my very best ever dumpster find. This vise with a swivel base, original paint, came out of a dumpster. This was sticking above the trash. There was wrapped around or sitting on a bunch of trash bags, and this was sticking out of the trash. I seen the color. I seen the profile of the end, and being a big fan of these Wilton bullet vices, I knew exactly what was in that dumpster, and I jumped in there like Mr. Scrooge in his money pile and dug this thing out, expecting to find a vice that had been welded all to pieces and was just pretty much beyond repair or beyond somebody's uh, idea of what repair, you know, looks like, or just a piece of a vise. That's what I was expecting to find. Not a fully operational Wilton bullet vise with the uh, swivel base, and the only thing that was wrong with it was the movable jaw was stuck. I took either a leather hammer or a, or a dead blow, tapped on this a few times, got it, got it moving, sprayed some WD-40 on it, got it out, cleaned it up, put it back together, and have been loving and using this thing for years ever since. The person who threw this away probably immediately went to Harbor Freight bought their cheapest vice, stuck it on their table, and was happy, not knowing they had thun, thrown away a just legendary uh, vice. At least in my opinion, they're legendary. So this has the factory serrated steel jaws on it, which are they're perfectly fine for rough work, but for welding work where you're holding stuff, usually you don't want to scratch it up. For machinist type work, serrated steel jaws are just not that commonly used. You know, like a wise man once said, and that wise man's Tom Lipton, name one thing that's okay to get chewed up all to pieces that you're working on, you know, in a vise. And if you run steel pipe, maybe that's that's the one thing. But for the machinist, usually, you know, nothing. You're not working on anything that's okay to get chewed up. So I want to make a set of less aggressive, softer jaws, and that's why we're we're gonna make it out of this uh, this bronze here. So before we pull those jaws off, I wanna show you something that was sent by one of my viewers over in Dorset, England. The Dorset flag, got a lot of viewers over there and a viewer wanted to send that. What a beautiful flag. So I'm gonna be hanging that up in the shop. In fact, I'm gonna do it right now. So let's hang this up, then we'll pull these jaws off and start uh, start making them. So after this video, do you a quick Google search of Dorset. Dorset, England. What a beautiful place. It's on my list of places I'd like to visit one day. I'm just going to hang this right up here. There we go. So it is hard to beat the feel of one of these, uh, one of these bullet vices. They're just so smooth. Round ram, keyed, lead screw. Very, very nice, all solid, gassed piece. So let's pull one of, the, one of these jaws off so we can so we can get some dimensions. Quarter twenty Phillips head screws. Oh, they're pinned. So I want my vice jaws to be a 
half of an inch thick. So I'm starting off with a, I'm going to do a three quarter inch cut here. We've got a really heavy chamfer on the edge, so I'll have to, I'll lose a lot of that material. So we'll just start off with a three quarter of an inch slice. And then we'll make another one. So another piece of shop tooling that is on the list for me to make is a saw stand, something that can hold long stock out like this, give it some support, that way it doesn't pull it out of the vise, or even in this case, the saw so light, flip the saw over. So it needs to, in my opinion, needs to have a roller on it, so you can roll the stock through. That's the like one we got at work. It needs to be adjustable in height, so if you're holding a odd shaped item, it's still supported out here on the end. I mean, you get the idea. It's, it's a simple item, but super handy for saw work like this. And if you don't have one, sometimes you gotta cobble up stuff like that. But it does work, so I need to add that to the list. Well, I need to check it off the list because it's been on there for a while. A saw stand. So because I need two of these, I'm going to take advantage of my end stop or my saw stop here. And I'm just going to cut two chunk. Wow, I could not have set that up more perfect than what I just did. So there we go. I'm going to set the saw stop up there. That way I'll cut one to move it up move the stock up to the stop, and then cut another one. So guys, there's deals out there to be had if you keep your eyes open. A good friend of mine at work, his name's Matthew. I work with him all the time. He was walking through a thrift store or a store that buys like good returned goods, Amazon crates and whatever that got returned for some reason. This was on the shelf and it had a $5 price tag on it. That is a miniature Noga indicator stand with the fine adjust. It is brand new, never been used. He, he knew that I would love this and picked it up for me, gave it to me as a gift, and I appreciate that. And I'm telling you, if I was walking through a store and I seen one of these with a $5 price tag on it, I'd run the risk of catching my jeans on fire, like a friction fire from my wallet coming out of my back pocket so fast to pay for that. that that's a very, very high quality, nice little stand. I love these Noga indicator stands. I've got a whole, whole fleet of them, but I did not have the miniature, and this one's got the fine adjust on it. So... Keep your eyes open. Every once in a while, guy gets lucky, finds a good deal. It wasn't me, but it was a buddy of mine who knew that I would love this and do. So, well worth five bucks. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is set these up in the vise like that. I'm gonna machine long ways because in the shaper, that's always the fastest way to do it. And I'm gonna machine these down to the thickness of this jaw, which in this case is 480 something thousandths or let's say 12 and a half mil. I'm gonna go with just a solid half inch because it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not a critical dimension, the thickness of the jaw because of the way that that vise works. Doesn't make a bit of difference. Once we get these to the thickness that we want, then we will flip both of these up on end and we will machine them to, I guess, to the height, which is three quarters of an inch, That's what we'll do. This is what we're going to do. Let's first uh, get these down to the thickness that they need to be. So here's the cutter that I've decided to use just to get us down to size on that stock and that is a piece of 3 quarter inch M2 high speed steel and our cutting edge is about a 5 32nd radius. Now this is not critical 
but it's just what I decided. That is a used edge, so I'm going to dress that up with stone super quick. We'll shove this in the clapper of the shaper, and then uh, and they get started. I'm just going to stone this up real quick and you know, dress that a little bit dull on the edge. So clapper is already angled. We're going to cut, I guess, from left to right, because otherwise we'd have to angle this clapper the other way. So there we go. down, touch off, and then we'll whittle these down to size. does should be no problem at all obviously 30 with a 50,000 step over Just slightly over three quarter. We got a long way to go. So let's do 50 50. We'll pull 50 thousandths off with a 50 thousandth step over. That should be about as aggressive as I want to go and not throw these things out and not be here all day either. I'm just gonna do a light cut. 13 thousandths is what I got dialed in. It's just a little bit of tap magic here. We get a finish cut on this side. I'll flip these over and then machine them to the final thickness on the other side. That way I not have two nice to finish sides. We're gonna reduce the step over from 50 thousandths to 10.
So about six hundred thousandths is what we're at. So we need to pull off about a hundred thousandths. And then this next pass will be our last, and we're going to shoot for five or half, half thou, half thou, half inch. We ain't got to, we ain't got to hit it perfect, right? These are vice jaws. So now that I've got these jaws finished to their thickness, if I had to do over, I would have finished one side, flipped this stock 90 degrees and worked it to the width, and then flipped it and done the other side to thickness. Why couldn't you just take these out and flip them up on their side and work them to thickness right now? Well, I could, but right now I've got a perfectly nice machine surface here that is absolutely parallel with the movement of the shaper. And when I go to put my serrations in, yeah, I'll get a nice even cut across both of them. I could probably get them in the vise back really good where it wouldn't matter, and it wouldn't matter anyway. But had I to do over, I would have machined one side, flipped them 90 degrees, machined them to width, put them in the vise, machined them to thickness, then come back and done the serrating last. I didn't. Whatever. Clapper box is loose. It's adjustable. So big square. Make sure that's good. Chloe's out there barking. She decided she wanted to go outside. So now I need to get the cutter in. And it needs to be square as well. A little mini square. Just line that up. go. Now I need to figure out my uh, step over and my depth of cut and my angle. So clapper square, tool square, this is a piece of 5 8 Momax cobalt and it's ground at 90 degrees. So I need to touch off to get a zero and then we need to figure out our depth of cut. How deep are we going to make the valley on our serration? I need to figure out the angle. Let's see what they what they used um, on this factory jaw. I'm guessing 30 degree. I don't know that. So I'm just using a little protractor here. Plenty accurate enough for what we're doing. I mean, we could guess, and it would still probably be all right. So I'm just lining it up with the uh, original cut marks. It's 32 and a half degrees. I thought it would be you know, 30. It's not. 32 and a half degrees. I'm going to say, because I'm not too worried, I don't want necessarily a sharp point, I'm going to do a 40,000 step to cut. And let's see about our step over, our distance between cuts. And we have the option of, on this machine, we have the option of doing each cut and then stepping over. We can do it manually or we can set the machine to its preset amount of step over and let the machine do it, which is probably the way that I'm going to do it. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 90, 110, 180, 150, and 170 thousandths is our option for step over with this machine. So let's see just roughly what their step over was. Just by eye here, it's kind of hard to measure. Looks like 83, that's what I'm getting by eye. So we'll do a 90,000 step over, we'll do a 40,000 step to cut, we'll do a 32 and a half degree uh, angle, and all I'm going to do use the uh, protractor that's built into the bottom of the vise. I'll just use my eyeballs. Cant it one way, 32 and a half degrees, lock it down, make a pass, can it the other way, and make a pass, and then our serrations. Uh, should be done.
So on this machine, the step over is controlled by this lever here. It starts out at 10 thousandths. There's our zero. It goes all the way up to 170 thousandths, but we're going to, like I say, do 90. So there we go. There's our 90 thousandths per stroke step over. So I'm going to go full depth of cut. Just going to do it all in one pass. So we'll go 40 thousandths depth of cut. First thing I'm going to do is cant this vise. 32 and a half degrees. So you just loosen the base. It's got a really nice graduated scale on it. These, these machines were made very accurate. You can trust the graduations on this machine. So 32 and a half. Good enough. Then we'll make a full pass at full depth of cut and then turn it the other way and do the same thing. Rinse and repeat. Make sure that I'm passing over the whole thing. I'm going to slow down the, the uh, stroke a bit. Backlash out of the screw, and now we just need to get our stroke going. Push go. That went pretty well. I, I started to do the lift on the back uh, so it doesn't, the tool doesn't bounce and make that, uh, there's a couple of spots there where the tool, when it hits, bounces. But it doesn't matter. This is a set of ice jaws, but I was going to do it by hand and I decided not to. So let's cant this vise the other way and do it again.
that looks awesome. A little sharper than what I probably would have liked, but it's fine. That looks good. So now what I'm going to do is machine these to height, which is super easy. We'll just pull these out, flip them 90 degrees, clamp them in the vise, and machine them to thickness, and then we will put our two holes in there. Got to get, get Cora in here. Cora, come on! Come on, girl! Oh, Chloe's jealous. Hello, little Lulu. What are you doing, little girl? So here's the plan to accurately place these holes on our new jaws. Now, what I could do, because these are vice jaws, is just pull that pin out or lay it on there like that. Mark, mark, drill, boom, done. But because I have the tools to do it more accurate and I enjoy this kind of stuff, that's what I'm going to do. So I've got a pin gauge set here because these holes in this vice jaw are not quarter inch. But you could use any pin that fit halfway decent. Uh, actually, this is 268 thousandths. Gives me a nice snug fit in that hole. And I'm going to stone this side of the jaw because it's kind of the knurls kind of rolled over and it won't set flat on the plate. I'm going to stone it good, take my surface gauge, come over, touch off the top of this pin, then zero my surface gauge and reduce that reading by half the diameter of the pin, and that will give me an accurate center line across the center of the hole. And then I will come in, blue the back of the jaw, scribe it, then I'll come in, stand the pin up on its end, come up, do the exact same thing, find the center, then stand my other jaw up and mark it. Pretty straightforward, so let's uh, let's do that real quick, and then we'll put our holes in there. So this may be a little off topic. I was looking at this the other day; thought that was neat. I found this in it was down in the dash of the uh, K10 square body, my brown one that I rebuilt not too long ago when I was tearing it apart. This was stuffed down in behind the dash, so it's got what looks to be a pheasant on it, probably a, uh, a shotgun, a backpack. Maybe maple leaves? Not exactly, not maple. I'm not sure what leaf that is. I think it's uh, silver, made in West Germany. So you know it's got some age on it. Pretty neat little pendant there. Any, have you guys ever seen any of those? Put it down in the comments if you have. I'm interested to, to find out. I did a Google search and I did not find much on this particular pen. So I'm just going to come down and touch on this pen, 268. 68 thousandths, just come down right on the jaw, touch on it, so right there, and I need to separate from 268, so 134, 134 thousandths, so 110, 20, 34, so that should be the center line of the holes. So let's just put a blue, put some blue on the back of these and scribe that in. My dehumidifier is working overtime today, man. It is humid outside. So there's that. And we've got to find this one. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way. Touch off. Subtract half the pin, you know, stand it up on its end, boom, boom. It's that easy. So here's the plan to get our pilot holes, or, or not our pilot holes, but our counter bores here. So it's just a two-stage hole. Bigger hole up front to recess the head of the screw. Nice flat bottom, so it makes good contact there. But on the back side, it's just enough clearance for the for the bolt to go through. So I got to think a little forward here because these holes are bigger than a quarter inch. Now this is a super nice pilot, or interchangeable pilot counterbore set that was sent to me by Denny Kylander. 
Berg or, I, sorry, I forget the last name, uh, but I'm surprised I remember the name at all. It's been quite some time. Beautiful set here. Um, it's complete. So what size is that? Uh, 7 sixteenths. So we need a 7 sixteenths. So, yeah, that's, ooh, that's 7 sixteenths. Yep, 7 sixteenths. Yep, that's it. And we are going to center punch these as accurately as I can. We're going to go over to the drill press. We'll drill them quarter inch because I know I've got a quarter inch pilot here. We'll counterbore these and then I'll come back and open up the holes in these jaws to the factory size holes just to give it a little more clearance. So that's what we're going to do. Let's center punch these real quick, go over to the drill press and drill those holes quarter inch and then boom, countersink these, counterbore them. So check that hammer out. Neat little shop project. Made this 7-12-2015, so almost eight years ago to the date. It's a broom handle, a piece of 3 8 uh, drill rod, a grade 8 bolt that I've just turned down to simulate kind of the shape of a ball peen. Drilled a hole through the bolt, TIG welded it, heated the top and mushroomed it over. And I've, I love this thing just for general light use like this. Funny that I almost looked at the date on this, almost to the date, eight years ago. why you should, not only for safety reasons, but that's why you should clamp your vise down. So now I've got my counterbore in here. This drill press, like many drill presses, has a depth stop on, on the handle. This one actually has two depth, depth stops that we can set. And what I'm going to do is loosen this one, which I already have, and I'm just going to set that depth stop. I'm going to drill until, because it doesn't matter what depth I drill these, only thing, the only thing that matters is that the head of the screw is recessed below the serrations of the jaws. So I'm going to my first hole that I drill will be a test. It will also drag on this depth stop wherever I stop, whatever depth I decide, then I'll tighten it down. And then every hole I do after that, leaving this engaged, I'll only be able to drill to that depth of the first one that I use as an example or whatever, reference. So that's the idea. So there's our screw. And then I'm just going to drill a bit, see what it looks like, you know, set that in there, see if it clears. And once it does, you know, I'll lock down the step stop and repeat the process on the other four holes that i got to drill, or other three. Cool. Call that deep enough, lock down this collar, and then repeat that on the rest of them.
So I think that that is good enough. I'm not going to put that pen in there. I think there's no reason, although we obviously could put that in there. Let's see if these fit. I haven't opened up these holes. They're just quarter inch. So they may not. Maybe a little tight. But no. Heck, that's, that's plenty good enough. Man, that looks good. There we go. Man, that's awesome. I can't believe that, uh, I can't believe that I found this thing in the dumpster. That's just ridiculous to me. That is too cool. So back on the welding table with my little dumpster dive Wilton. I just, every time I look at this thing, I cannot believe that I found it in the dumpster. Whoever threw this away, I mean, obviously they did not have a clue of the value of this thing. I mean, this, a little bit of cleanup work to unstick the movable part. And this thing will give me and my son, and probably my son's son, a lifetime of service. It's just a quality piece. And every time I look at it, I just smile, knowing that I found it in the dumpster. So, and it's, but it's ruined me in a way, because every time I go by a dumpster now, I look, because you just never know what you're gonna find. And I am tickled to death to get this set of jaws on here. Not only does it look good, in my opinion, but, you know, I've been wanting to do it for, quite some time and it's nice to take that off the list because I, I do I have some work coming up that yeah, you know I wanted these I wanted to use these instead of steel jaws or what I had been using this these lead plates that slid over the vice jaws and that works too but you know they they're kind of slick and they're kind of getting wore out and need redone so I wanted these I'm glad I did it I'm super happy with the way they come out